Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 2 of 2020, appointing Nov Abdul Rahman Jamshir as Chief Executive Officer of the Urban Planning and Development Authority. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable congratulations to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, on the 14th anniversary since he took power. His Majesty wished him abundant health and happiness, and for Kuwait and its people, further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable congratulations to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, on the 14th anniversary since he took power. His Royal Highness wished him abundant health and happiness, and for Kuwait and its people, further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received Iqbal Khan, member of the Executive Board and Co-President of Global Wealth Management at UBS Group AJ, AG at the Dhabi Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the government's commitment to continue diversifying Bahrain's economic base in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness underlined the important role of financial and banking institutions in propelling growth and creating quality job opportunities for citizens. Khan welcomed the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to ensure the continued strength of Bahrain's financial sector. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Al Maraj, and a number of officials also attended the meeting. Deputy Premier and Chairman of the High Committee for Information Technology and Telecommunications, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa, patronized a ceremony marking the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the Bahrain based Salak Gulf Company in the presence of ministers and a number of employees. Employees and public and private departments which contributed to the success of Salak Gulf were honored during the ceremony. His Highness made a statement in which he expressed pleasure to patronize the ceremony and hailed the company which was launched 10 years among other successful initiatives under the flagship of the 2030 Bahrain Economic Vision in line with the directors of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa as one of the strategic goals of the e-government. His Highness added that the ceremony also comes in appreciation of the company which contributed to honing the skills of 2,500 citizens and enabling them to engage in the labor market with the required quality and efficiency in addition to provide rewarding job opportunities for 750 employees, 83% of whom are Bahrainis. Deputy Premier reiterated the government's keenness on supporting the company to continue achieving its preset objectives, wishing them further success. IGA Chief Executive Officer and Sula Gulf Chairman Muhammad Ali Al Qaid expressed thanks to the Deputy Premier for patronizing the ceremony. He also expressed pride in the company's success and its contribution in providing the Bahraini market with national cadres with experience in the field of communication services and customer experience. Al Qaid reiterated the company's keenness on supporting sustainable development, diversifying sources of revenues to achieve fiscal balance, improving good governance, enhancing the standards of quality, productivity and innovation, promoting a favorable entrepreneurship environment to attract competencies and investment to achieve the government plan of 2019 to 2022.
The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzia Zainal, chaired the weekly meeting where the Council approved a draft law ratifying the foundation and articles of association agreements for the Gulf Payments Company. The Council also approved a proposal on increasing care for cancer patients and holding officials accountable for negligence and default in treating cancer in government hospitals. The chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, met the Grand Imam of Al Azhar al Sharif, Dr. Ahmed Al Tayyib, and conveyed to him the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and their wishes of further progress and prosperity to Egypt and its people. The Grand Imam praised their bilateral relations and hailed the role of His Majesty the King in serving religion and promote moderation, peace, and coexistence. Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Muhammad congratulated the Grand Imam on the success of Al Azhar al Sharif International Conference. He affirmed that Al Azhar al Sharif is a symbol of moderation and a source of unity among Muslims. He also praised the Grand Imam's efforts in spreading peace, tolerance, and coexistence, wishing him abundant health and happiness. The Grand Imam expressed pride in the bilateral relations and hailed Bahrain's participation in the conference and also hailed the speech of Sheikh Abdul Rahman. He wished both countries further progress and prosperity. In the presence of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up Committee Chairman and Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and under the patronage of the Minister of Oil and Chairman of the National Oil and Gas Authority, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the CEO of NOGA, Nasser Suwedi, inaugurated the induction workshop for NOGA's project with the Green Climate Fund to enhance climate resilience for the water sector in Bahrain. This workshop was organized by NOGA in cooperation with the United Nations Environment Program to discuss a number of related topics, the most important of which is to build different models of climate change and its impact on the water sector. The Suwedi noted the importance of the role played by government and private institutions in promoting cooperation in order to implement a number of environment projects that are in line with the strategy of the government work program in this regard. He added that climate change has become a vital issue associated with the oil industry because of its impact on the policies of the response measures neg negatively affecting the oil industry. He noted that NOGA's projects in this regard came to reduce the negative environmental impacts and address many global challenges where the project consists of seven major initiatives aimed at enhancing climate resilience for the water sector in Bahrain. The Suwedi addressed a study prepared by NOGA on environment affairs and the issue of water security. The board member of the Green Climate Fund and chairman of the Arab Climate Change Negotiation Group also spoke about the importance of this project for Bahrain and the region and commended Bahrain under the management of the Minister of Oil for receiving approval and authorization from the board of directors, opening the way for other countries to benefit from the financing of environment projects. The Kingdom of Bahrain as uh, the only small developing island in the region uh, and through its partnership with the Green Climate Fund uh, and initiating this uh, strategic project is uh, a turning point in uh, the Kingdom's efforts in uh, facing climate change. We do believe uh, in, uh, in multilateral cooperation and uh, the uh, partnership between NOGA, the Green Climate Fund and having the uh, UNEP or the United Nations Environment Programme as uh, a partner in this project is something uh, that we do believe it would contribute to the uh, Kingdom's efforts in uh, facing uh, climate change. It's a great pleasure to be here. It is a historic moment for witnessing the launch of the Bahraini project. Simply because it's really in Bahrain, this makes it a very special project. The, this kind of project is really needed in Bahrain for adaptation and addresses water. It's unique in its, uh, in its nature and uh, especially it's in Bahrain and it's the first of its kind in this um, region. We look forward to bringing more projects with a bigger sizable scale than this one. Yeah, I think this project will uh, uh, provide uh, uh, a very important uh, component in the, in the water resource management in terms of capacity building, uh, either uh, institutionally or uh, individually. I think building uh, the people, the institutes and the tools uh, to manage water resources and uh, help in the decision making process is very vital for Bahrain to have sustainable water resource management. An implementation of the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to distribute 5,000 housing units. In light of the Royal Directives, the Ministry of Housing and Secretary Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa announced that the distribution of the second batch of housing units in Jlaya neighborhood in East Hurt Town has begun. 
He directed to speed up efforts to complete this project in order to implement His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's order to build 40,000 housing units. Sheikh Abdullah said that the next step is to complete the housing units in Bushaheen and Umm Shajar neighborhoods.